Uh, just a, a quick uh, refresher. Last Wednesday, we, we, we looked at this. We had arrived at a place in our Bible in 1 Kings where something significant happens, uh, where the first temple is actually built. Uh, and uh, a permanent temple, and it was a, it was a, it's, it was a big deal then, and uh, something significant. And then we just simply traced the temple. Mo- the word motif means a dominant theme or a recurring central theme. And if you trace the uh, the theme of the temple, you, if you look at this, the paper. Uh, it traces from all the beginning to the end of the Bible, all the way through the Bible. So it's clearly a dominant theme. Now, where I brought us in is uh, the temple being primarily simply God's dwelling place. We used to refer to church houses as the house of God, <laughs> you know, Um that doesn't mean if, you know the walls are holy or anything. It just means that uh, because you know and I know that the church is not the building; it's the people in the building. We know that, and that's where that's where you and I come in because it's so it's so precious, so sacred to realize that every Christian is a temple of God, not figuratively, not symbolically, but actually. And when you when you see yourself as as a well to use Paul's language, you know not a, he doesn't just call us a temple, but when he speaks of a Christian that dies, a Christian that passes away, that they put off this tabernacle to be absent from the body is to be what good you all present with the Lord. And so while you're in this tabernacle, this tent, you are literally uh, a house for God to dwell in. That's amazing. Uh, it, it's, it's amazing. The beauty of it, I think, uh, well, there's a lot of aspects to it, but the beauty of it is all, all through time and even today, people have idols and there are things that hang on a wall, sit on a wall, things that you can touch and see. But wherever you go, in the surgery room, in the nursing home, whether you're in a valley, whether you're going through a difficult time, God is always with you. Amen. And he ain't, he's not sitting on a shelf somewhere, you know. We don't worship nothing in this building <laughs> Okay, I mean, if this building burned, we'd gather in the parking lot and still have church. Am I right? And, and so, so that just—that's why you have so many promises. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And if you go through the fire, I'll go through the fire with. So you're never alone. You you never go any through anything all by yourself. And I, Tony, I used you as an example, brother Tony over here during COVID. I uh, had to have uh, went in for his heart, and none of his family, nobody could could be there but tony knew the lord was there with him and i don't know about you all but that sure feels good to me to know uh that that i have the presence of the lord did anybody um how many of you are confident uh you can repeat our memory verse that i gave you last week (laughs) melissa you want to you want to give it a shot okay okay did anybody remember at least the reference the chapter and verse Proverbs, we got the book, 423, okay, so far so good. Now, does anybody want to just give it a shot? Hey, you don't have to like say it word for word. Give me the thought of it. Anybody, a general thought? Keep thy heart, uh, guard your heart for uh, everything goes through it. Hey, I love that. Amen. Y'all come on, Miss Shirley. That's applause, girl. All right. Valedictorian right there. <laughs> In the house. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Her moment of school fame. Proverbs 4.23. Uh, I, can, I only know the King James. That's what I learned. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And which a more accurate, ac- accurate, 
accurate translation was right here. Chaz put up, I think, is the New International Version, and it's very good. Above all else, guard your heart. Everything you do flows from it. That's an astounding truth. And we picked that up because, and it's okay, I'll go ahead and get ahead of myself right here. Well, no, I won't. Let's just let the Bible do the talking, okay? So like this sheet, just look at your cheat sheet there with me. Um, and I'm only going to try to say that once because I don't want to get tongue-tied on that. Um, if you notice at the very beginning of your paper, before anything was ever created, there was God, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, not two, not four, not five, uh, one God in three persons. You say, Brother Bobby, I don't understand that. Me either. There's a lot I don't understand about the Bible, but you know what? I still believe it because it's God's Word. And there's a lot of truths you will never understand until you believe it. Amen? I like what a preacher said. He said, I don't understand enough for everything about electricity, <laughs> but I don't live in the dark. <laughs> And I don't understand everything about the Bible, but I'm going to believe it because it's God's Word. Amen? And so you have God. So you, you, so you ask your question, okay? And I, I want to bring us in on this, and please feel free to share. Why would God, who is perfectly happy, perfectly content, perfect in every way, why would He want to make a bunch of people like us who rebel against Him? Why, 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 why would he want to decide to just get some clay that it's going to be marred, going to turn against him and not do what he says and not respect him? and not? Why would he even want to do it? <laughs> Amen. I mean, so you have to ask yourself individually, why did God make you? And you know that nobody's ever been made like you. I don't know how he does that, but he made you. Now, you have to ask yourself, surely, why did he make me? Why would God fashion me? Okay, you know what? Here's the beauty of God. God made people because he, he is so, I don't know how to say this. He is so, I don't know, he's so love. He's, he's the epitome of love, and he wanted to make some people so he could put his arms around them and love them and show them his love. Isn't that beautiful? Have you ever blessed somebody just to bless them? I mean, really, have you ever blessed somebody? Maybe you were in line at McDonald's and somebody was behind you like, I'm going to bother, put that person's order on me. I'm just trying to think of something, but just the thrill of giving somebody a gift or the thrill of blessing somebody, it feels good. Amen? It feels good at, at, at Christmas when you buy your little niece or somebody and you're, they're like, oh, and it makes you feel good. Well, that's probably a small little example of what I want to tell you why the temple is so important to God. Because God just wants to be with his people. I know that's not deep stuff, but it's precious. Amen? Um, I'm not going to go through every one of these because it, it will eat up my time. We, di we did a lot last week. But all I want you to notice through here is the pattern. The pa and and I, I want to get to me and you who is in the next to the last row. Um, when God created the heaven, then the universe and the atmosphere, notice these three stories. You have the third heavens, where Jesus is at right now, on a throne. Uh, then you have the universe with all the stars and the lights. And then you have the atmosphere where we live on earth. Now, that's how God made it in Genesis. And that's his pattern all the way through here. Let me give you an example. Okay, um, look at Eden. Your Bible, you'll say the Garden of Eden. Eden was actually separate, uh, yet connected, but separate from the garden where Adam and Eve was placed. So God, go ahead, go ahead, Tracy. Um, just what's your opinion? Is it uh, reverse identification in the sense that from the garden... A city named Eden was created? 
Or yeah. was there a city called Eden and then God created a garden in it? Um, I'm not familiar with a city of Eden. I mean, it was prior to the flood, it was an identified place, Eden. Yes, 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 yes. So yes. was that created after the fall in the sense that when Adam and Eve left, they created a city to live in? Yeah. Uh, exactly. Well, Tracy, that's a great question. Actually, Cain, Adam and Eve's first son, uh, walked away from the presence of God and went and built the first city. Uh, Ezekiel 28, uh, I think we looked at that last week, Ezekiel 28, 16 through that, says that Eden was a mountain, and out of it flowed one river, and that one river forked out into four rivers in the garden, which made it so lush and so, you know, dynamic to live in. Is that Does that answer, or does that make any? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Eden was a... Was a, was a mountainside, not an actual city. Exactly, exactly. And Eden was attached to the garden. Now, Eden is symbolic of like, if you go across your paper, uh, when they built the temple, it was built in three structures. And let, I tell you what, let's try to use this. Um, I want you to look at that little baptistry because the Holy of Holies was only, I think, 15 feet cubical. And so, um, in the Holy of Holies was the Ark of the Covenant. How many of you know what the Ark of the Covenant looks like? Okay, it was a wooden chest covered in gold and two cherubims with their wings stretched out touching like this. Okay? And between uh, the, the angel wings, there was where God in his glory, and, and it's hard to describe that, it would be... Yeah, yeah, mercy seat, but his glory, it's, I can't describe his glory, but sort of uh, just the presence of God, and I don't even know how to go there. I would, I, I, <laughs> yeah, 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 and so so uh, you would not be able to see in there. You would never be able to go inside. There's only one man that could go in there, and that was the high priest. He could only go one time a year, and he would take the blood and sprinkle the blood and the anointing oil. So there's a veil. There's a veil. And then let's say you come right here, and there's another big old veil, a tall. Uh, Solomon's temple height would have been 45 feet. So picture a curtain eight inches thick, that tall. Remember that curtain was split open when Jesus died. But picture a curtain, a veil. Once again, you could not go in. Only the high priest could go in, and he had to go in every day. And it, it was called the holy place. I listed that on your paper. Remember the pattern of creation? And in the holy place, now watch this. I want to bring me and you in right now. Um, in the holy place, the high priest would go in every day. And over here, how many of you know what a menorah looks like? A menorah, I'm not there on my board, but it's, you know, it was a one piece with uh, seven branches. Yeah, and that was the lights in the holy place. It matched, on your paper, it matches the lights that God put in the universe. Solomon had 10 of these set up. You can imagine the beauty of 70 lights just glaring like the stars in the universe. And so you had the menorah. He had to trim that thing. He had to keep the oil refreshed. It was a, it was a huge, major problem for him if the lights ever went out. Okay? Now, huh, I knew this was going to happen, but when I find a door for an application, I want to jump on it. Um, that lamp, that light, Jesus said for us who are Christians, we are the light of the world. We are a city that's set on a hill. We're the salt of the earth. Y'all remember that? Your light is your influence. Your light is your witness. You live in a dark world, and there's a lot of darkness of iniquity and a lot of satanic darkness, a lot of depression, a lot of people who are lost and can't find their way. You are God's light. Y'all remember? Come on. This little... <laughs> I'm going to let it shine. Angle that Satan what? Blow it out. 
that's right. That's right. And so it, it's it's the, the your lamp is to never go out. It's so sad. Oh, it's so heartbreaking. To see. Go ahead, Tracy. It's, it's clarified that it's the church. Amen, Amen brother. The lamp of the seven. So it's the light of the world. The church. And I and I appreciate Tracy bringing that up because the first church in Revelation, Ephesus. God said, if you don't change, I'm going to remove your lampstand. And he shut the door on that church. But it's so heartbreaking to, to see. I've seen it in my ministry, and I don't know how to fix it. I, I don't know how to fix anything, to be honest with you. But I've seen, I've seen people come to know the Lord and shine, light up the room with joy, praise, a testimony, and then life. And they, they, they don't shine anymore. They don't they don't shine. They don't they have no and don't be that. Don't be that. Religious. Amen. That's where religious people they shine for a moment. Man. Yeah. Yeah. You want to be a meteor or a star? <laughs> right? So anyhow, back in here, now I want to bring a strong application in. I hope you're writing these down. I just wanna over here was the showbread that he had to change out every, every Sabbath, had to stay fresh. There's another application. You know what I'm saying? And then right here in front of God was a little golden altar with four horns and incense. It was, it was the symbol of prayer. And so, so here's the mighty application for us. Our greatest job, our greatest priority, our number one purpose for living, get this. You're not going to think of this often, is this. Here's what you're supposed to do before you do anything else. Behind this curtain, there's no people. He ministers to God. He ministers to God. He makes sure God's bread is fresh. He makes sure God's light is turned on. And he makes sure that God is smelling the aroma. You know what? We will literally waste our lives on people and never spend time with God. If you set out to serve people and not spend time with God, you're going to get burnt out. You're going to get hurt. You're going to be like, I can't do this anymore. But in that room, in your closet, with your TV off and your phone turned down, and just you, just your quiet time with God, that is, how do I even say it? That is the engine room. <laughs> That's the powerhouse. And you, all right, I got to, I got to, I got to really. Go ahead, Dave. Who is that the Lord calling? He's good. Yeah. yeah. Now, I want to I bring you into this because I want you to understand the value that God has put on you. So you have the Holy of Holies where God is at. You have the Holy Place. And then out here is called the Outer Court. Now, listen. Oh. Uh, in the next to the last row, we put a strong emphasis last week on 1 Thessalonians 5.23. I'd like for Chas to throw that up on the, the monitor there. Because remember, you as a Christian, you are. It's not an option. It's not an option. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. You're a temple of God. Here's how God made us, just like he made creation. We're the pattern, okay? When God made man, he patterned him. And I pray the very God of peace sanctify you holy, holy, and I pray God your spirit, soul, and body. Now, remember that we put a, a big emphasis on the order don't forget that. Boy, if you want to write something in the front of your Bible, you, you put this down. Because every single thing God does in your life, He's going to do it in this order. God is focused on your holy of holies. Out of the heart, out of the essence of who you are 
deep inside, what's in the well is going to come out in the bucket. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay, so if you're angry in here, and you're mad at somebody, and you just eat up inside, it's going to come out here. <laughs> it's going to come out some way. It ain't going to sound good, and it ain't going to sound pretty, but it's going to come out. Because you're a volcano, and you can't hold it in. You know, go, yeah, go, go stand in the corner and count to 100, and maybe it'll go away, you know. But if you're full of Jesus, and Jesus is like the Spirit of God is... Remember that river that flowed out of Eden? Jesus said in John 7, 37, he said, and he cried out real loud. He said, if anybody's thirsty, come to me and drink and out of your, he, the King James says belly, but it's literally out of your inmost being, the depths of your spirit will flow rivers of living Water, this spake of the Holy Spirit. Isn't it beautiful? You become a walking temple. You become a walking sanctuary. And the presence of God is just flowing out of your life. And I love that word flow because, because uh, flow, there's a lot of the Christian life that is so effort. It's so... Um, I have to kick myself to read my Bible. I have to kick myself to pray. You, you know what I'm trying to say? You have to muster up. But when the Spirit is filling you, guess what? You just flow, man. You get in the flow. I don't even know how to uh, say it, but it's just good when you're in the flow of the Spirit. And so I want you to see yourself in the light of God. Everything God does... He is trying to make you spiritual. He's going to orchestrate trials. He's going to allow things to happen. He, he, he will. God, God's not playing games with your life. Thank you, Sam. Yes, he's got a plan. And his plan is to make us like Christ. And so everything God does. He will allow, he will permit stuff to happen to my body in your spirit. You, you see that? Now, now, if we're opposite, we're going to clash with him. If we're all about the body, that's right, Sam. If we're all about the body, then we're going to miss the, the spirit aspect that God is doing in our life. D does that, this is where, this is where we brought that memory verse in, guard your heart. Because remember, out of you. Now, let me, let me just say something right here. I know that you and I think if, if the culture was better, we would be better. Got to be the opposite. Yes. We have to be better to influence the culture to be better. Jim, well said, my dear brother. Well said. Because you see, the Christian life is no matter what's happening on the outside of you, you have God inside of you. Here's our memory verse for next week. I just got it straight out of the oven. You ready? Got your pen in hand? 1 John 4.4. 4. Greater is he that is, I don't know if he says in me or in you, but it works either way. May, may have said us. What? Oh, it's on the screen. Uh, you have got little children. Now, the second half is what I'm shooting for. If you want to remember the whole verse, that's fine. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Which means nothing on the outside of you can stop you. People say, oh, they're taking prayer out of schools. How are you going to do that? Oh, well, they won't let us gather at the flagpole. <laughs> well, 
pray in your little chair. You can't stop spiritual stuff. Amen? Amen. So, so now, I hope I didn't lose you somewhere, and I hope we've tried to stay on track here. Please, brother, go ahead. Feel free, Tracy. Uh, a lot of people don't talk about the outer court. Um, but the outer court was called the court of women or the court of prayer. Yeah. But you can't look at it chauvinistically. It was a place of obedience. It was a place of submission. So you have to think of it. You can't enter into the temple without starting with obedience, mm. with submission to God. Yeah. And what happens to get into the temple? You have to have Christ walking with you. That's that sacrifice. Amen, What's brother. the purpose of going into the temple? Is lifting up your prayers or communicating with God. Amen. I mean, that's the whole point of that temple. And you're to create that same existence in your body. You submit, you're obedient with your flesh. Okay? And then you come to the knowledge and you accept that Christ is your leader, your ruler, everything. Yeah. And then what do you do? You go to God in prayer. Amen, and brother. you're in the Holy of Holies. See? It, it's beautiful. When you grasp, when you grasp the reality that, and 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 at this point, as as Tracy used the Old Testament type, we have to sort of remember now. Um, remember the woman at the well, and she Jesus came and she was there and she said, "Well, now we've been taught you got to go over here on this hill to worship the Lord." And Jews would say, oh, well, you got to be at the temple. And, and the beauty of what we're talking about tonight is you can be Zacchaeus up a sycamore tree. <laughs> okay? Uh, that's the beauty. You, you, I want you uh, to see yourself, as, as Brother Tracy said, see yourself as a, a portable sanctuary. Yeah. Lord, Lord. Lord. yeah. Where God sends you to be. Yeah. You're his mobile home. That's right. You're his RV. Okay. If we want to use uh, living Bible language or the good news Bible, maybe that's it. So do you see, I, I want us to feel and realize the value that I'm not just a religious person. I am the treasured dwelling place of God. And y'all, I don't know how y'all feel about it, but that's a big deal. Y'all impressed with that? I mean, who? And, and when New Life Ministry and any other church that assembles in the name of the Lord, if we could grasp this, I think it would change everything. Like when we come in to those doors, uh, we're not like clicking into religious mode, we should be in the Spirit before we come, right? Would y'all agree? But when we realize that we are oh. Does the Bible tell us to bring our first fruits to the temple to see yeah. that God will be faithful? What are we doing every Sunday? Are we coming to take from the church or are we coming to add to the church? To, yeah. To build up church bring the first fruits amen brother not tear down right, right. and and it y'all help me i'm gonna i'm gonna go into help mode right now and i'm serious i'm serious um i don't i don't know what to do but let me put it to you this way maybe y'all can throw some stuff back at me the whole purpose of the garden, the unique thing about the garden, the unique thing about two naked people, Adam and Eve, if you saw them, you would not have seen their nakedness. They didn't. Because the glory of God was their clothing. And God said to Adam specifically, Adam, guard this garden 
with your life, dude. Don't you let anything into your home, into your heart, that would defile this place. And Adam let his guard down, really let his guard down, let the devil in, and immediately when they sinned, the glory departed, and they saw themselves, and they blushed, and they ran to hide from the presence of God. Now, I said all that to say this, to ask you for help. The whole purpose of the tabernacle and the temple and all that was because God wanted to put His presence. Man, when they got finished building that tabernacle and that temple, when they got finished, the Bible says God come down, and it was such a cloud of His presence. It says that people began to fall on their faces and bow in His presence. It said the priests couldn't go in because of the weight of God's glory. And let me tell you, the enemy would say, God is in the camp. We ain't going to do battle with those people. I mean, when God was there, it was glory days. And you knew it and you felt him. And when you went home from church that day, you're like, Phew, I don't know, but we just experienced the Lord. Now, whether I sounded dramatic or not, I'm going to tell you something. This little church and any other little church, we're not a social club. We don't come to meet with each other primarily. We come to be a temple where God can show up. And I have prayed and I've cried and I've prayed that we could experience that he would visit us, Dave. Just visit us in a way that everybody in this room, you may not be able to put words on it, but when you walk out of those doors, you get in your car and you'll be like, I don't know what happened today, but God was there. Let me tell you something. When that happens, lost people get under conviction they got to get in or get out of the kingdom. I mean, you're going to get saved. God's people are God. I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. Now, listen, listen. I don't know how. I don't, I've been in some old services uh, where I just knew. I know God is with us, church. We're His temple. He will never leave us or forsake us. Where two or three gather in His name, there He is. But as we close, I'm just going to close right here. I think we've said enough to give you a lot to chew on and think about. And if you, if you remember anything about tonight, remember your primary purpose in life is to spend time in the holy place before Him. Because when you die as a Christian... As soon as you shut your eyes, you are in the holy of holies. With myriads of innumerable angels singing, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. In Revelation 4, what we sang Sunday morning, Revelation 4, John said, I heard them singing, Thou art worthy to receive glory. So, so what I'm saying is... I don't want to be like, oh, I wasn't prepared for this, <laughs> right? I'm used to formality. I'm used to, no, let me tell you, when you're in God's prayer, so your primary purpose in mind is to not minister to people first, but to try your best daily. And I know it's busy, sometimes there's distractions, but if you'll make it a part of your life, to spend time alone with God. Don't make excuses. I don't care how busy you are. Do yeah. you want God? 
You want God to touch your life. Yeah. Christ spent all day ministering to every single buddy. Yeah. But what did he do? Go back to the town hall and rest? No, he went into the wilderness to spend time with God. Wow. It yeah. doesn't even say he yeah. slept. Yeah. And then when he come back into town, he was bombarded again. It meant more to him to mm -hmm. be with his father. Is that the same with us? If she didn't talk to you, would you go out of your way to do everything you could to get her to talk to you? Like after a while, it started bugging you. <laughs> yeah. You want to use a different example? <laughs> He's right. As a husband, your wife stops talking to you. It's funny at first, but then after a couple days, you're you're starting to panic. <laughs> yeah. And it's like she's gonna poison my food. <laughs> yeah. You go out of your way, and you almost yeah. become stupid to yeah. get her to talk to you. Yeah. If he doesn't talk to me, it's probably because. Well, I'm just saying, he definitely needs to get close. To God. Yeah. That's where the analogy breaks apart. God's not like that. <laughs> yeah, but do you want God to change your family? Yeah. Do you do everything you can to get to God's presence? Yeah. Or do you just give a little prayer every now and then and read your Bible a little bit and then come to church and expect the pastor to feed you? Yeah. I'm just saying, to be honest, we all fail. Yeah, yeah. The men of God didn't. Mm -hmm. If it meant you didn't eat dinner, because you didn't pray long enough, then they would pray longer. Yeah. If they felt because it wouldn't leave their head that your neighbor needed something, and you know they need it. You know they need to be touched by God. Yeah. And it's bugging you. You go off and have a good time, go fishing, go hunting with your buddies. Or do you want God to change your life? Go help that person. I mean, I'm just saying how yeah. we, we talk about the Holy Spirit but yet all of us linger and beg for something the apostles went through, that the disciples went through, to see God physically move, yeah. not to our glory, but to the glory of heaven. Yeah. Are we doing anything for that? Are we seeking that? Yeah. I mean, it's great to come and praise God and be, hey, look at me, I'm a good Christian, I know all the words to this song, and I'm happy and I'm excited. But is that true? Are we happy and excited because we've seen God yeah. moving in our lives? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. it's just let's be honest. Let's let's make going into that temple on a daily basis the most important thing in our lives. Yeah. Wow, it's it's yeah, it's it's, it's I don't know. It's it's hard to No, I want to give you another memory verse. I want two memory verses. <laughs> you know, Matthew 6:33 as Tracy was speaking. Seek you first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and what? Everything else you need will be added unto you. So so before we so as we close, uh, Tracy's brought up, you know, something uh, on the money for us to spend time with God. What do you all think, just a couple of thoughts that we could do? Uh, and speak to me if you want to. If you want to speak to me, Brother Bobby, you need to do this. I'll take it. If you want to say it about all of us, say it to me. What do you think we could do to gain a greater presence of the Lord? Because remember, there was a church in Revelation. Jesus was on the outside knocking uh, to come in. Any thoughts anybody want to? I know that's a tough one. Something that we throw. don't want to do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we want to put anyone on the spot. Okay. Well, outreach. Okay. Yeah. Outreach. What can we do to reach just the neighbor? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's been long enough that there's probably new people. Yeah. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> and and that I feel like that would be a flow out of. Wow. thing you were talking about where yeah. we look to understand what it is that we feel called by God to do. Yeah. That's an internal growth thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Internal. Sorry. No. What what do you think you could do? You, you, anybody. What do you, what do you think? Okay, let me ask you this way. I, I'm I know it may be a tough question. Okay, let me let me just ask you straight up this way. Do you think 
Okay, let's put this. So Daphne and I are on our way to church, and we are in the car having a knockdown, drag out fuss. Both of us are in the flesh, okay, and we we're just we're just mad. But when we're gonna get out of that car, and we're gonna click, and our smiles are gonna be you know Joel Osteen style, man. We're, and so we're gonna we're gonna come inside. And, and, and you're not going to know nothing. Let me ask you something. Do you think when we come in and fake it that we could hinder the service? Yeah. Amen. Oh, y'all are preaching to me now. Like, yeah, sir. Y'all didn't hesitate on that one. What did you say, Brother Corbin? When did you do that? <laughs> yeah. But Bobby, that goes for each and every one of us. Yes. Yeah. If Ann and I get into an argument and I lose like I normally would, okay? <laughs> <laughs> God, his marriage is working out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if we don't resolve that and we come in here with those feelings, how are we influencing the service? And, I, and, I, and let me say, add to what Jim said, because remember, Jim and Ann and Daphne and I, we can come in and fake it with you. But who's the one that knows? That's right. That's right. He knows. And we could hinder the service. But, and we're going to have way too much pride if the service is dead at 4 o'clock. We're going to have too much pride to stand up and say, okay, got a confession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're probably not going to put our pride aside and do it. But and and it this doesn't have to be a husband and wife fussing with each other. If I bring, I don't I don't want us to all leave tonight feeling. On, on, yeah, yeah. I was get, trying to give a sermon when Michelle was sick, and I had to stop. I mean, I was broken. I was defeated. Wow. I was afraid of the loss that I would have to suffer. You know, and all of you know that. I mean, you all were here. And I needed prayer. I needed prayer. I needed that moment. I needed that strength. Wow. You know, wow. I wasn't going to allow being up there in a position to give it a sermon to interfere with the fact that I was so afraid that I couldn't see God clearly. Wow. So you were like in a spirit of fear or doubt or... I lost. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Fear that things were greater and more powerful than I could than I could handle, yeah. and they were. <clears throat> that fear is of Satan. Yeah, yeah, because there's there's reverence for God, which we all should fear God. Yeah, not because He's going to punish us, but because we're being disobedient. Yeah, but there is that fear that shouldn't be in your life. Yeah, yeah, you know. But I'm honest. I'm I'm not going to say that no one in this room gets that afraid. Oh. Man, you're speaking. You're speaking our language, brother. We all bring the cares of this life, and Jesus used a graphic example. He said, "The cares of this life will grab you by the neck and choke the spiritualness out of you." And the cares of this life it doesn't have to be anything sinful. It can just be stuff that we're facing. Um, but let me just. Put the Marciano cherry on top before we go. I done put the icing on. Is this? I really try to encourage this church as your pastor that you, when you come in, you have a part in this service. I don't want to be so formal that we cut out testimonies and we're so clockwork that we cut out the liberty. And I want God's people to know that. And I will close. I was in Macedonia Baptist Church toward Greensburg. Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, I was helping Timmy Glass in revival. And it was, ugh. And I, I decided Thursday to go back Thursday and close it out. I was done because uh, I don't believe in dragging out. So I, the, I'll never forget. It, it's like happened yesterday. The message God gave me for Thursday night was on praise. So we have singing. 
and I get up and I open my Bible, and there's a mother about Casey's age sitting over here where Dana's at. She has two kids, no husbands with her. She jumps up on her feet out of the blue, tears flowing down her cheeks. She's had a horrible day at work, but she stands there and just starts praising her Savior. I mean, just praising him. Thank. Well, I was standing up there just like getting holy ghost goosebumps. She just, it was so like, there's the temple of God right there. And you talking about God spanking me. I mean, the spirit just started moving all over that church. We had a, I didn't even get to preach. God was like, "Uh uh-huh, you's going to close it out. I ain't going to let you preach. I didn't even get to preach. God's people were just, and the Lord flooded. I'm telling you that because this mother, just no big title in the church, no big office, but just obeyed the Lord. And so what an encouragement for me and you to come in. And if you, you might not be able to stand up, give some eloquent testimony. Who cares? If you're in the spirit, just say, I just, Jim blesses our socks off me ever so. Praise the Lord. I just love to hear Jim praise the Lord. So, so that's a good word to go on. Amen. So put it all together. Let's, let's make a priority. Spend time with the Lord. Is that cool, you all? Is that good? Yeah.